Hi everybody, welcome to the Off the Grid Revolution. We're in a greenhouse again. And uh, it's mid-September, and I wanted to show you some things about end of the year for farming, gardening, um, that sort of thing. So I'm going to walk around here and show you some stuff and talk about what you can do with some things. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't do is um, save their seeds. And so look at these tomatoes over here. These were um, grown in the greenhouse in just a coffee can. And look at the produce that came from it. Okay? Fantastic. Yeah, this was a scraggler uh, volunteer um, that we took out of the garden. Had no idea what it was. Now a volunteer plant is... One that came up on its own from stuff that fell, uh, came off of the vine last year. For instance, check out this puppy where it's cracked open. Mm -hmm. um, that would fall off onto the ground and then bury itself into the ground and the seeds would then produce another, uh, another plant next year. Now, what I, want, what I want to show you today is some ideas about how to save seeds, okay? Um, tomato seeds are one of the more complicated ones to do. Um, what I want you to do is no, don't take one like this that's screwed up, that cracked itself open. Find the prettiest and best in the entire garden. Like, um, not that one because it's cracked open, but that one, okay? The very best of the fruit that you get because what you're doing is Genetic engineering. This would be then a uh, genetically inherited uh, improvement in the plant, not GMO. Genetically inherited. Um, I'm going to eat that one, so I don't want to show you this with that one. But you see the seeds that are in there? Watch this. Okay? Look at that. See all those seeds? And look how slimy they are. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, with a tomato, you want to get those seeds, put, take, get a jar and just pour them right into the jar. I'm going to just dump them out there. Okay. They might come out up next year if I use that dirt again. Um, you let them sit in the jar. I use baby food jars because I have a, a friend who has um, tons of baby food jars because she's on her second baby in like four years. And I put them in the baby food jar, put water in them, let them get slimy and moldy and gucky. And then um, after that happens for about five days, put them into a strainer, Rinse them off really good, put them on a plate, let them dry out nicely, and those are ready to plant next year when you're going to develop your tomatoes from your own seeds. No corporate involvement whatsoever. And every year you get a better and better, uh, better plant. Um, they change, uh, but they get better. Um, How do you mean they change? Uh, they change in terms of becoming more what the, the plant was before it was corporatized, okay? okay. Um, they get acclimated to uh, the environment you're in. Like, you pick the very best every year, and that's what you get the next year. So okay. they get better every year in some regards, and they get less and less engineered if you happen to have some that were not um, heirloom or uh, more hybrids. The hybrids go back to what they originally was. We originally were. I'll show you one of those outside. Um, but uh, the other thing to do is flowers. Um, I don't have one here that I can do a real good job of showing you, but I'm going to do this anyway. Um, this is a black-eyed Susan. See how do you let this dry out completely, okay. and then tear it open, and look what you get. Those are black-eyed Susan seeds. Every one of those can be a black-eyed Susan plant. Okay. And you can plant those however you get instructions off the internet to do. I just um, I just dig a row and stick them in or dig a, a circle and stick them in wherever I want them. Um, and so those are seeds okay. from a flower. Anything that flowers in your garden, you can take the seeds that way. Um, here's another example of a seed. This is a grain seed. Let that dry out completely. And the way you let them dry out is you hang them upside down. And when the seeds are ready to use, you just peel them off. Now, this is not dry, this, but I'm just doing this to teach. See how these are green? They would be brown seeds, mm -hmm. okay? You take those seeds and plant them. This happens to be a grass, okay? So if you want to replant grass somewhere, you can get it from your own grass seeds if you're willing to let them grow tall enough. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah, uh, so that's tomato. Um, uh, pepper is a lot easier to do. 
Uh, let's see if I can find a pepper that I can break open easily. I'll use this one. This is not, not it's not, yeah, it is. It's, it's, you would want, of course, these to be beautiful and big, the very best on each plant. But mm -hmm. to save these seeds is so easy. Break open the pepper plant. Now, a fully developed pepper plant, will, uh, pepper, will have lots of uh, larger seeds than this, okay? This is seed saving for peppers. That you, smells delicious. <laughs> oh, man. Young baby peppers. I love them. They're so delicious. Pardon me for eating and talking with my mouthful. I mean, <laughs> talking with my mouthful, it's cool. They'd be bigger than that, okay? They'd be okay. bigger than that, but see how they come off the plant? Mm -hmm. And they're super easy to collect. Peppers are super easy to collect. This goes down with the other stuff I'm gonna take and clean up and eat. Um, another thing I wanted to show you at the end of the season is uh, this, look, the differences in the colors of the two different soils. Mm, Got yes. that? Mm -hmm. This is soil that has not been depleted by feeding plants. Okay. This is soil that's been depleted by feeding plants. This shows you the necessity of changing soil or trans uh, or or fertilizing. Okay. Without fertilizing, you get this next year, won't grow crap. This is crap. It'll grow beautifully. This is that stuff that we started with at the beginning of the year. Five-year-old horse manure and sawdust and no poop smell at all. No poop smell at all. We asked That's Ohio, a good thing. We asked Ohio State whether this was safe to use or not. And they said, if you can't smell it, it's probably good. And I said, well, it doesn't smell like manure. And it doesn't taste like it either. And everyone went, ew, you're eating manure. And I said, no, just kidding. I never tasted it. Not on purpose. Um, so anyway, there's some seeds. Uh... So you pick out the very best of whichever plant you've got and do it. Um, that's kind of it for seed saving. Um, you could do the same thing with a cucumber. Cut it open and dry the seeds. Uh, you can do that with... You could do it with anything, couldn't you? Just about anything. The key is to keep them in um, a, a cool, dry place over the winter. Okay. Um, I want to show you how to produce another batch of potatoes. All right. Um, this, these are potatoes that probably wouldn't do very well, but I want to show it to you anyway. Um, because, did you get the idea? See how this potato is funky and old? Mm-hmm. Plant that. Next. You know, uh, I remember doing that in grade school. Yep. Plant that. That becomes a potato plant that will produce, um, and my, I plant them in buckets. Uh, let me see if I can find a, a potato bucket. Here you go. That's a potato bucket. Plant the, that stem, maybe okay. two of them, in the bucket, and then plant the bucket in the ground. You plant everything on the potato below the soil, correct? That's right. Nothing above. That's right. Nothing is above. Like like with this one, let's assume this is filled, okay? Dig it in about that far in the springtime, cover it up. Uh, and then plant the whole bucket down the ground as far, as far as you can do it in your soil. Okay, if you can take it to where that's that far below the soil line, that's beautiful. That's okay. great. And then what's nice about this procedure for planting potatoes is that when you're ready to harvest them, you don't have to worry about where the potatoes went. Mm -hmm. They're all right here in the bucket. Mm -hmm. All you do is take the bucket and dump it into a wheelbarrow, swish through the dirt, there's every potato. You don't lose one. Comes out really nicely. Fantastic. And then use that. Um, one thing you have to remember about potatoes is you got to keep mulching and mounding after you plant them. It's like when you plant a potato plant, let's assume that this is a potato. Okay, it's not. This is a tomato. You got a picture of that, Joe? Yes. Got you, you would take um, and uh, assume that this is the potato plant. It, once it comes out of the ground, if it's out, uh, a couple inches farther, you just take some dirt and you just mound it, okay? Take some dirt and spread it around it and build up the area around the stem, okay? Keep it going because potatoes will turn green if they get exposed to the sun, mm -hmm. and so you got to mulch. We go around every fall and we find as many bags of leaves that we can get. Some people say don't get oak leaves. We do. We use oak leaves too. Um... They say they don't decompose fast enough. We don't care. If it takes a leaf three years to decompose in our garden, so what? 
any leaf that doesn't decompose becomes the sidewalk. It's the path, okay? Mm -hmm. But we use leaves, we get straw from people uh, after the Halloween season is over. They're going to just throw them away, we grab them off the curb or whatever. Um, and we use that to mound our potatoes and to create our paths in the garden. Okay. Uh, so we're looking, we used, um, oh God, 200 bags of leaves in the garden last year. Wow, fantastic. Um, and we got them all from setting on the curb, okay? We go curb shopping for, uh, for supplies for the garden. The key with that, if you're going to do it, is to drive by and look at the lawn. If you see weeds in the lawn, those are good leaves to get. If you don't see any weeds in the yard, leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Because they've been treated with chemicals, and there'll be leaves on the chemicals you don't want to have in your garden. Okay. Okay? So, um, 15 seconds left. Closing Okay. Thoughts. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Randy. You're welcome. Bye.